mouth breather. Hopefully the piece of candy I have squirreled away in my left cheek will not prevent me from making myself understood as I speak on an issue of considerable importance to the future of American civil liberties, or at least that's what I believe it to be. The, the fundamental cornerstone of the American justice system is and has always been innocent until proven guilty. Uh, furthermore, it is innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, now, I do have problems with the exact way the court system operates, but that's mostly logistical issues and bureaucracy and so forth. All of that is uh, fixable, but the fundamental principle bedrock on which the entire system is founded is the idea that if someone is accused of murder, you don't have the right to call them a murderer. Uh, the fact that it's possible for the media to... Uh, repeat slanderous rumors without any consequence in this day and age, and, uh, libel us technically, rumors, um, but, you know, if they're, if they're spoken, they're slanderous, if you then print the exact same word, it's libel, that's a, it's a kind of a silly distinction between the two, it, like I said, our legal system has problems, uh, but the bottom line is, the fact that someone was perceived as possibly being guilty of a crime does not justify treating that person as if they actually were guilty of the crime. You have no right to do any of that until and unless they have been f firmly and uh, unquestionably convicted uh, based on the standard of evidence, and in my opinion, it should be stricter than it is, but uh, like I said, our system is imperfect. We have the sensationalization and the uh, one of the most fundamental problems with the way our government operates is the perception that if nothing happens, then nothing is getting done. Whereas uh, a good metaphor for the whole thing is is the uh, the old thing about a duck seems to glide effortlessly along the surface of the water, but if you look below the water, its uh, legs are pumping furiously in order to propel it forward. That's a that's a good illustration of if if. Congress was passing no laws, that would not prove that they weren't doing their job. It would actually prove that they had done their job so well that nothing further needed to be done. But we have that false perception, and it also applies to uh, legal situations. So the news never reports on a uh, 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 person was found innocent, thereby illustrating that the system works, because that's, that, that to our somewhat twisted media influence perception that that scans as an example of nothing happening when in fact it is an example of something very important having happened uh, so I, I just realized that my face is is reversed in by the camera today I, I this is this is my left cheek and it's on the right side of the screen I'm I feel dumb for not noticing that but but I don't think that makes the things that I've been saying dumb I I, I have my uh, I have my little moments where something obvious skates by my attention, but that's because I am thinking deep thoughts about, like I said, deep philosophical concepts and principles of abstract right and wrong, which I believe are more important than the silly everyday details of normal life. So anyway, like I said, guilty until proven innocent, and in the age of coronavirus, I think there is a very important uh, corollary to that, which is healthy until proven sick. Uh, the, the current idea that we should assume everyone is an asymptomatic carrier and force everyone to wear a mask so that they're not spreading their, their theoretically possible ge uh, germs that they may or may not actually have, this, this is right up there with lynch mob vigilante justice based on whisper campaigns and unfounded accusations. This is based on, the, the, the fundamental principle of all of this is based on the idea of dividing the people, getting people to distrust each other, invoking fear and turning people against each other is the oldest trick in the book when it comes to establishing tyranny. You get people to be scared and you convince them to accept a temporary, quote unquote, loss of their civil liberties, and somehow things never go back to the way that they were before. It happened for Hitler, it happened for Stalin, it happened for Pol Pot, and I firmly believe it is going to be happening for uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris very shortly, and uh, 20 years from now, Kamala Harris might well be remembered as history's bloodiest tyrant since Hitler. Uh, that's, that's speculation, that's not legally actionable. I just, I, I, base that, I base that on the fact that 
like, in 2016, it seemed absolutely inevitable that Hillary Clinton was going to be swept into the Oval Office based solely on having a vagina and for no other reason, in spite of a massive reasons why she was clearly not qualified for the job and, and not a trustworthy person. Again, all of that is just my opinion, not legally actionable. Um, and so, I don't know an awful lot about Kamala Harris, but I know she's a Democrat, I've heard she's a feminist, and my, my perception is that she, you know, former, Joe, former Vice President Joe Biden is now a candidate for president. My idea is that uh, he plans on tutoring Kamala Harris in how he uh, took the vice presidency and turned it into a potential presidency, and, and if he becomes the actual president, he'll be grooming her for that role, and uh, four or eight or twelve years later, uh, she's going to come along and, and be the presidential candidate, and uh, it'll be Hillary 2.0, and she'll try to avoid all the mistakes that kept Hillary from actually managing to overcome the Trump base, who are, in my opinion, the real story of that election, and still the real story today. I am hoping to see them pull it off, but uh, I, I, I don't feel good. I, I think it is distinctly suspicious that this coronavirus thing came out of nowhere during an election year and uh, seemingly the flashpoint of its origin was in China around the start of this year and you know China is a communist party and the socialist elements within the Democratic Party are, are very friendly towards the idea of communism and they kind of look at uh, China as an example of a successfully functioning communist state because China is really good at controlling their their media and not allowing their uh, not allowing reports of the hideous human rights violations constantly being committed by their party to to get around and just you know anyway the the point is I I do not want to see that happen to America which means it doesn't matter if hundreds of thousands of of Americans die. It doesn't even matter if tens of millions of Americans die. We have uh, 375 million. We could afford to lose a few. The thing that we cannot afford to lose is the principles on which our nation is founded, because we are the one and only country on the face of the planet that has ever had the thought of, give me liberty or give me death. It is more important to preserve the meaning of life than the actual state of being, uh, uh, of, of being alive. That is an important idea, I think, and, and I believe that the entire rest of the world is doing a good enough job of testing the, well, let's try to keep everybody alive and do the best we can to make life worth living within that. Everybody else has tried that strategy. India and China have, have populated the holy living fuck out of them themselves and are now hugely short on resources to keep everybody going and having to sell cheap labor to the United States in order to keep the economies of both countries afloat and, and uh, this is kind of okay but also kind of disgusting like it, it's good that the global market is able to solve people's problems for them but these problems could have been prevented if, if something different had been done anyway um, so I don't want to see America become just another third world country, which is the direction that we're, we're kind of heading. I often look at the, uh, the Middle East, the miserable condition that it's currently in. Uh, 600 or so years ago, Baghdad was like New York is today. It was the, the center of the civilized world. Uh, and there was no country called Iraq at the time. It was the, the, the seat of a, a massive Muslim caliphate that basically stretched from Morocco to uh, parts of India, which still exist as Pakistan, and possibly even further east into Indonesia. I'm a little unclear on that. So, so you know, once upon a time, Islam was the hot new religion that, that was taking the world by storm, and it had some really interesting ideas that... Uh, founded a new dynasty and, and created this empire that seemed unstoppable at a time when uh, Europe was basically falling apart due to the Black Plague and, and oppression from the Roman Catholic Church and various other factors that were making life uh, kind of terrible uh, for that entire continent. Uh, but the misery that Europe went through back during that time, and more recently, you know, up to and including the World Wars, 
eventually kind of got Europe to clean up its act and, and resulted in the creation of the uh, European Union, which has some problems, and I've heard that it's pretty thoroughly riddled with corruption, but overall, it's, it's doing a reasonably good job of, of you know, keeping, keeping a historically war-torn continent functioning on a basic level and slowly pushing uh, science and civilization forward. Um, so there's at least a possibility that, that things are going well for Europe, and uh, America as an offshoot of Europe has, has also done some bad things and some good things, but overall doing a reasonably good job of, of having a put-together society that's accomplished a lot of great things and doing reasonably okay. But in the meantime, we have the Middle East as this kind of devastated uh, landscape dreaming of pla past glories and constantly uh, tearing itself apart over ancient blood feuds, I see America as very likely having that future and, and becoming like that uh, in a couple of hundred years. Uh, I think there's going to be a time when uh, uh, phrases like redneck, uh, you know, the, the concept of the, uh, the, the American hillbilly with a giant collection of guns who, who hides out in a shack in the woods, that's going to be right up there with the current uh, kind of towelhead stereotype of, of Middle Easterners as these crazy fundamentalists who resort to violence at the drop of the hat. Uh, that That's, you know, that, that, that cartoonish uh, figure is obviously not true of all or even most of the people, but there are reasons for a stereotype like that to exist. There are some people like that in that part of the world, and to some extent, they were driven to that by bad economic conditions, but it was also based in large part on ideology and perception of one's own identity and the idea of, of oh, we were once this glorious caliphate or whatever, and and now it has come to this, and it's all the far fault of those uh, damn American devils or whatever. Uh, that 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 sort of thing is going to happen in America in 300 years, I think. So we're you know. I, I don't know who the rising star of the, the uh, world is. I rather hope it isn't China, because they really don't deserve it with the way they've been run for the same roughly 100 years that uh, America has been uh, rising to prominence based on uh, industrialism with all of the ups and downs of that. And meanwhile, China decided to go the uh, oppressive totalitarian route and just grind out huge amounts of productivity based solely on their huge population. So... Uh, both both systems have their uh, advantages and, and disadvantages, but I I really think that the American way is less odious and more justifiable uh, with all of its flaws, and, and at least has some chance of working those flaws out in the long run, whereas the uh, Chinese uh, oppressive uh, censorship policy really does not seem like it goes anywhere good, and in fact leads to the kind of a situation where they can ma more or less manufacture a disease, depending on exactly how true that is, you know. If they didn't create the virus in a lab, then at the very least they created the pandemic in the sense of how they handled the first few outbreaks and did not do a good job of, of isolating them. Anyway, we're, we're getting away from uh, justifiable statements, so I think I've rambled enough. Hopefully you see where I was going with the whole idea, and the bottom line is... I am trying to preserve what is good about America, and, and I think that it's worth preserving.